We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. Today, we are diving into how to get out of ruts of discouragement as a writer and an artist. We can all fall into the trap of being down on ourselves, being bummed out about our work. Perhaps things feel like they're not going the way we want them to. We're not seeing the results we want to see, and we're just done with it. (laughs) We're miserable. We're upset. Whatever the scenario might be for you, whether you're experiencing it now or whether you want to just do a little preventative care to prevent that from happening in the future, that's what we're going to discuss today, how you can get pumped up about your writing again and get out of this loop of being discouraged and escape those negative voices and put some positivity back into your craft. But first, we have to thank our sponsors who are you. That's right. You guys are the ones who support this podcast and keep it going. And we so appreciate your support. So if you get value out of this show, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this podcast alive and free of interruptions. So yeah, a lot to uh, lot to untangle with this topic of mm-hmm. discouragement. The discouragement can come in many different forms. It might just be that you are working on a new project, a writing project, or maybe a project you've been working on for a long time, and you're starting to feel discouraged by either the process itself or maybe your writing style. You feel, I know, I know, me and Kate have fallen into ruts of feeling like oh, maybe we've lost the touch <laughs> when really yep. it's just you're having a bad day. <laughs> it's, it's, you don't have to be that yeah, dramatic. It's so ironic. It. How you know? said that. How many times do you think we've each said that? <laughs> I don't know. So many Too times, many. like it's very, a, a ton of times. And yeah. it's funny because when one of us says it to the other, we're always like, stop, stop, wait till tomorrow. You're going to be fine. Yeah. And exactly. you always are. Mm-hmm. You always are. It's always just maybe you need to take a small break. Yeah, that's, there's a lot to be said for taking a small break, even if it's just a half of a day or something. It doesn't have to be, yeah, this isn't the only thing you can do. Yeah. Even creatively. Okay. So maybe there's something else that will make a sculpture. (laughs) Go outside, take a nice deep breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or make something that is fun for you. Cookies. Yeah. Cookies work. We actually do that a lot. I'm like, (sighs) <sighs> want to make cookies yes definitely i mean yes right now i do yeah same <laughs> <laughs> but like ser- go do something fun go do something you know will inspire you that gets your creative juices flowing too. the worst thing you- yeah the worst thing yes it does the worst thing you can do is sit around and tell yourself like oh we're discouraged right now and we're never going to write again. So hope you enjoyed it while it lasted because it's never yeah. going to happen it's again. It's like you're just running into a wall, like <laughs> a broken video game. You're just yeah. like running into the wall and you're not going anywhere. It's like, and- you know what? Stop. Just stop. Just stop. Get up. Get away from the computer. Shut the computer. <laughs> Go do something else. Because otherwise you're just going to stay in that cycle. Like I experienced this recently with uh, the writing project we're working on. I was like, oh, I can't get past this. You know, this. The, I feel like I just am not feeling this. I'm never going to write again. This was a bad idea. I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh my God. And Abby's just like, how about you take a break? And then the next day I wrote like 4,000 words. And I was like, this was the best writing day ever. And Abby's just like, see? See? <laughs> see? <laughs> yeah. And it's funny how like that's the last thing you want to do though in the moment. Yeah, because you want it to work so badly. You would rather just stay in front of the computer and be grumpy. Yeah, which is not helpful for anyone. Yeah, especially if if you're living with other people. Please be sympathetic to those people. (laughs) Abby nods aggressively. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, yeah, but no, I'm. I mean, I'm guilty of falling into those grumpy writing moods as well, where it's not working out, and you just feel actually. Honestly, yesterday was like that for me, and I wrote a lot. And in the process of it, I was feeling a little bit frustrated. Like, I don't really know if this is coming out the way I want it to. And reading back over it last night, I was like, 
this is good i don't know yeah. why i was stressed out right <laughs> you know yeah because sometimes you have to trust your own ability like hey yeah. you know i'm a good writer even if i feel kind of crappy right now doesn't mean my writing is bad yeah and I think a lot of writers look too far ahead with this discouragement thing when they start to feel discouraged and stressed out and grumpy about your writing process itself. You're not really living in the moment. Mm. I find when it happens to me anyway, I'm always looking ahead to like what I'm about to write or the finished, my idea of the finished product of the chapter or the scene and imagining it to be not as good as I wanted it to be. It's not so much what I'm currently writing. I'm like not in the moment anymore. You know, I'm kind of placing myself too far ahead. And yes. I think that's where you trip yourself up. And I've noticed that especially in music <laughs> when I'm practicing something on the piano, if I start thinking about like the next movement or the next piece that it's going to go into, I will mess up what I'm currently playing mm. because I can't, my brain can't go to, okay, this is the next part. This, These are the next chords you're going to play because that's not the chords you're playing right now. So if you start thinking about those chords and then you're playing different chords right now, just my brain personally as a musician, I can't do that. I'm like muscle memory. I have to just do what I'm doing right now and can be completely in the moment and not theorize and overthink it. Yes. You know, I think that's where a lot of the discouragement comes in. And that's where you start to mess up, at least when you're, when I'm playing, <laughs> when I'm playing the piano and I start thinking about the next piece and I start stressing about, oh, will I, will I be able to like do that right? Then I start overthinking it and then I start messing up. But if yeah. you just stay in the moment and enjoy yourself, it ends up being better than you expected yeah. most of the time. It's the same for me, except with Kata. Yeah, yeah, that's that's you know another I mean? thing. Have you experienced you know, that's that too? Kind of, that's an artistic. Yeah, you just have to be in the moment because if you are thinking, okay, what's the mm -hmm. seven seven steps ahead? I yeah. have to make sure when I you know land this crescent kick that it's not slightly askew. And then right. now it's like, oh well, wait, what am I doing now? Oh shoot, I screwed that up. It's actually because like, you have to be right now from yeah. movement to movement. Yeah, and it's it's almost like disrespectful of what you're currently doing yes. it's disrespectful of the current movement the current action of creativity to be projecting your own idea of how this might not work out mm, i love that you know? disrespectful respect the moment respect the moment put that on a sweatshirt yeah we're talking about like you know live in the moment all the time live yeah. in the moment enjoy the moment respect the moment Respect Dang it. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. a lot. That's very deep when you think about it. Yeah. And because it is disrespecting the moment to be not giving it the attention and love it deserves. Yeah, exactly. And when you can simplify the issue, you, like you said, this analogy in a, a couple episodes ago, something about decluttering and when you overwhelm yourself with like, the, oh, I'm going to declutter my whole house and you're excited about it for five minutes until you get into it. And now you're like, oh my gosh, I can't deal with this. What am I doing? Just simplify it to one thing. Okay, I'm going to organize this drawer. When you're looking at your novel, when you're sitting down to write, you're not writing the whole chapter. You're not writing the page. You are writing this sentence. You are writing the next word. And when you can pull back from this giant image of hopefully this book ends up being good because otherwise I don't know what I'm going to do if this book goes bad and I'm just never doing this again. I can't believe how bad this is. Don't, don't think about all that. Like, what do I want this next word to be? Yeah. And, and try not to think about it being good. Like, how do I make this good? How do I make this real? Yeah. And how do I enjoy it? How do I enjoy it? Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. instead of I want to make this good, have your goal be I want to enjoy this. I want to enjoy writing the next paragraph and the next one and the next one because the good writing days are the writing days that you really enjoy. Have fun. Yeah. You're having fun while you're writing. And chances are if you're having fun while you're writing, your readers are going to have fun while they're reading it. You could write the most technically perfect paragraph scene chapter book and it's not fun for anyone to read mm -hmm. because you didn't have fun writing it you just sat there stressing out about making it technically perfect yeah so don't do that no one Enjoy wants it. to read a textbook they want to read what's really in your heart 
Yeah, and sometimes that might be messy and emotional, but that's how it's supposed to be. And mm -hmm. that's what will make your reader feel emotions. And I think a lot of discouragement can, can come from that process of just overthinking, theorizing, sitting there in the stuck place of, I want this so badly to be good. That felt, that sounded weird. I wanted this. I want this to be good. I so badly want this to be. Good. <laughs> I so badly want this to be good that I'm now having a miserable time writing it. Well, that's not helping anybody, and it's not going to be productive even in the long term for your book or your project or your career, for that matter. Right, and you're kind of ruining it. Yeah, by doing that, you know what I mean. You're like, have you ever made everything about it? <laughs> Everyone's gonna make fun of me in the comments because I use like food analogies all the time. I feel food and martial arts. You know, go I figure. Use food analogies a lot. Too. Yeah, well, it's they're often really good analogies. But I have had many times when you're baking something that requires the incorporation of the dough, but not too much, only just enough that it's just incorporated enough or else it will be hard and like not rise properly and stuff. So I've gotten so stressed out before. Like, I want this to be so perfect. And you know, what if it's not incorporated enough? Maybe I should just do a little more. And then it ends up being like, not good at all. It's ruined because of how much you are trying to make it this perfect thing. It doesn't look like that. That person's picture on this blog. I better need this a little bit more. And, and then it's like this lumpy thing that looks terrible and is hard and you're breaking your teeth on it. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, just if you make don't it, you know try. What? Yeah, just chill. Stop trying to make it look like that person's thing. Stop trying to make it be the perfect thing. <laughs> you might end up making it the opposite of what you want it to be by stressing so much over that. Yeah. Sometimes you need to just relax a little bit. Yeah. And I think another thing that discourages writers is looking at other successful authors who have achieved their idea of success and seeing that as so far removed, so out of their league, so not a part of their future mm -hmm. that they become discouraged okay. thinking that will never happen for me or how can that possibly happen for me? Because logistically you can't see the steps that lead up to that moment for you. And I think this is a mindset shift that needs to happen because those same people, whether they are influencers, authors, directors, and producers, whoever they are, those same people have the ability to inspire you and encourage you, not discourage you, okay? They can make you feel even more encouraged and excited and motivated to work on your thing and to become that to get to that place with your own thing in your own way in your own style it can be a driving force for good in your life or it can be something that you are jealous and discouraged by so it's all about how you see it it's completely a perspective thing it can be inspiring or it can be discouraging <laughs> yes and <clears throat> trying to think of how to phrase this thought the more you love things the more you attract that mm -hmm. yeah very so true. a place of jealousy or i wish i had that and i know i never will being negative being doubtful of your own ability and future and potential those are all negative things they're at their root they're unloving things mm -hmm. unloving towards yourself unloving towards others, the universe, however you want to think about it. It has no good energy in it. Whereas when you're loving things, and even if it's someone else doing that thing that you've always wanted, I love that. I love that that person is succeeding. I love that feeling that I can see in them. And I know one day I will feel that too. That's directing loving energy into the situation, which is attracting more of that to you. Yes, 100%. That is so true. And you guys have probably heard me talk about the law of attraction before briefly, and I think it's a very powerful tool that can help to inspire and encourage you as an author, as any creative, pursuing any creative career. Because like you said, putting out 
what you put out comes back to you is, mm-hmm. is kind of the, the whole principle behind it. And if you're putting out love and good energy and excitement and that feeling of success, that has to come back to you. Like th- there is no other op- option. Right. That's what happens. That's how the universe works. It does come back to you. And that energy that you carry throughout your day, throughout your week, your month, your year, your life, that is a part of your life. So be careful about what that energy is because you can choose what that energy is going to be every day, whether you're going to be inspired and showing love towards something or you're going to be discouraged and pessimistic and thinking that will never happen for me. That's completely a mindset thing. So you can change your mindset every morning, every minute, actually, which is, I think, a very inspiring and optimistic thought that you always have this choice to change your mindset, change your perspective on it, and that will in turn change your life. But looking at other successful authors, I think one of the most important things to do is to first and foremost, you know, feel love and excitement towards that thing, be happy for that person, like you were saying, and also to imagine yourself in that situation and let yourself be inspired by that. Don't think of it as, oh, this is just wishful thinking, you know, this would be nice if it happened, but it probably won't happen for me. Think of it as that is already in my future and it is coming to me. Mm. I'm pulling that towards me into my reality by thinking about it and visualizing it. That is something I utilize every day. I utilize visualization, meditation, and thinking about what I want my future to be and pulling that into my reality in a very um, like subliminal way. And I think that is so much more powerful than we even realize. Yeah. But especially with creative careers where success is not guaranteed, You know, you have to work at it and you have to have big dreams and have perseverance and have grit, but you also have to encourage yourself, right? You know, you have to give yourself a kick in the pants and you have to keep going when you don't feel like going any farther. Right. And those things have to become motivators or else they will squash you. Right. And to realize (laughs) that you're not doing it for nothing, that you will succeed if you keep going. Really, that's where grit and perseverance come in because if you keep going and keep doing it and keep going and keep doing it, even when things are tough and hard, even when you only have, you know, 10 people on your email list as an author or, you know, a handful of people on your social media, Abby and I have both been there and it feels like no one is there to listen to what you have to say. We've both been there. Yep. And that's where everyone starts. Yeah. No one starts with like hundreds of thousands of adoring fans just sitting there waiting to receive from you. Right. You know what I mean? That, that's another thing. Those people that you look up to, they all started at zero. Exactly. So you have to keep going and there will be periods when it seems like, oh man, this is never going to happen. You'll have those thoughts and you have to t- say, nope, I refuse to listen to that. I'm going to keep going and because I know that there are beautiful encouraging, wonderful things in my future for both me and the people whose lives I will impact. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge motivator. And that That's something that happens for everyone. Like you said, that's everybody has experienced that discouragement. Everyone who is successful, I should say, has experienced that discouragement at some point in their probably early on in their career of feeling like no one's listening, no one's here, nobody is partaking in my thing. And they were able to get beyond that, get beyond that stage of feeling discouraged and feeling maybe a little bit hopeless. And once they got beyond that area, it became easier and easier for them. But it is a, it's a hard area to go through It's definitely a hard period to go through that period of discouragement when you don't see results, but you're putting out a lot of effort. And I think the light at the end of the tunnel here is it will happen. Like you were saying, success will come if you don't give up Yeah, and you keep moving forward and it will get easier. It won't always be I'm 
I'm hustling so hard to get these people to look at my thing, to watch my videos, to, to do whatever I'm asking them to do, read my book, whatever the case may be. It won't always be a struggle. It there will you will reach a point where it will be like exponential growth and you won't have to worry about working so hard. It will be it will become more a part of who you are, but it will also become easier just from a technical like logical standpoint. Mm. So it won't always be this way. That's, that's I think, an important thing to remind yourself of when you're feeling discouraged, even if you're just discouraged in your own writing, whatever it is you're working on at the moment. It won't always be this way. But finding the gratitude in that as well, and being, like we were saying, being respectful of the moment, respecting this step you are on in your journey, this point you're on in your journey, and being grateful for it because you'll only ever be here once. Like you will only ever be living this day on this this step in your journey one time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And there may be pros and cons to that. It might seem like there are more cons to it at the moment, but later on, years from now, maybe 10 years from now, let's say you are wildly successful and have accomplished all your dreams, there are still going to be problems in your life and your career that you're going to have to deal with. There are still going to be struggles and challenges, and hopefully you will be better equipped with more experience to face those challenges and overcome them. But it won't be like everything is solved and everything's perfect because nothing's ever perfect and perfect is, is a subjective word to begin with. But I think that's important to remember that there are things you have right now that you won't have in the future when you are successful, even if that's just, you know, the current uh, current situation you're in, even if it's just uh, your youth, Yeah, <laughs> you know, enjoy where you are right now, right. even if you feel young and inexperienced and unsuccessful, uh, well, first of all, you're not unsuccessful. You are a success just by getting up every morning and doing your best and being yourself. That is in and of itself an accomplishment. You should be proud of what you're doing. But your youth and inexperience can be seen as a gift. That is something mm -hmm. to be grateful for. That's something to enjoy. You know? Exactly. And sometimes that's where some of your best creations will spring from yeah. that. Not from this place of high pressure, looking at other authors, looking at what's popular. Just let it flow from your heart. Mm -hmm. um, I know we have a lot of young writers who listen to the show. And what I would say to you guys is what Abby was just saying, enjoy it. Don't be... Um, ashamed or bummed out that you don't have a lot of experience yet, enjoy that lack of experience because this is where all the good stuff comes from. This is where you get to explore. This is where you get to begin and unfold and flourish and bloom. And so many new things will come out of that, things that people haven't seen before, things that are fresh and different. And that's exactly what the world needs more of. So don't feel like, oh, I need to get experience and wait and look at all this comparable stuff. Like, no, no, no. Just do you. Do you right now. And we that's what we want to see. That's what we want to see is who you are right now in this moment. Yeah. And enjoy it because years from now, Let's say you accomplish your goals, you achieve your dreams, you're living your dream author life. Looking back on today, this moment, this year, this season of your life, you're going to wish that you enjoyed it more. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't take the opportunity now to enjoy it and have gratitude for it and get joy out of it, you're going to wish that you had mm -hmm. in the true. future. So that's, that's something that always... I try to remind myself of that and it encourages me to enjoy my journey where I am right now and not not be too much in a hurry to get to, you know, a future right. place that even even when you visualize something and it's good to visualize things and to to pull that into your reality, but don't lose your gratitude for where you are currently. Exactly. I guess is my point here. Have gratitude for now and that's what invites more love and more light into your life yeah 100 percent. yeah so um i think we covered a lot in this episode oh i also wanted to just say that um 
I know we've talked about this in the past, but there are so many um, amazing stories that you can find just with quick Google searches of some of your most, uh, some of the most successful creative people who have put out amazing work into the world who started from like less than nothing. Like they had went through really hard times, struggled through a lot of different challenges and overcame those challenges. And I'm sure they were very discouraged at certain points in their career and their journey, but they overcame that and became something incredible and were able to produce amazing things that had a great impact on the world. Um, So reading about people like that has always inspired me and encouraged me and got me out of a rut of discouragement because I think to myself, if they could do it, then so can I, because we all have the same, we all are, we all, all bleh, we are all born with the same equipment. We all have the ability to persevere through challenges and to change our perspective on life. Perspective is really your superpower. And as soon as you start to see it that way, you'll be able to overcome whatever life throws at you. Perspective is your superpower, and that is what will take you through the discouraging times in your journey, whatever that journey is. So remember that you are an amazing creative, and this is just one step in your journey. Enjoy where you are right now, and try not to hurry up to get to a certain place. Use role models as a source of inspiration instead of discouragement. Don't be discouraged thinking that will never happen for me. Remember that everybody started from where you are right now. Like everybody has experienced this feeling of discouragement and feeling like nobody's listening. But believe me, people are listening and there's going to be more and more and more people listening as you continue to pursue your dreams and continue down this path. So yeah, absolutely true. I Um, think we went over some good, (laughs) good ways to get out of discouraging ruts and to encourage yourself to bolster your spirit. Keep going. Yeah. Hope you guys took some notes. Yes. This was uh, definitely a a um, motivational episode. Hopefully you feel motivated after listening to this. And um, if you liked this episode, smash the like button if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube and you're listening on an audio platform, check out the video version of this podcast that's on Kate's YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash K-A Emmons. Leave a comment, let us know what you thought, share it with a friend who might need some uh, confidence boosting today in their writing journey if they're feeling discouraged. Also, thank you again to our amazing sponsors who make this show possible. We couldn't do without you guys. Thank you so much. If you get value out of this show, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep it alive and free of interruptions. Until next week, stay stoked and rock on.